Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Planet X News. This is Scott from the Nibiru channel. Welcome aboard. We're going to be going over some more credible information on the brown dwarves. And it just seems to be the more and more that I dig for this information, the more and more that I am finding it. And not only am I finding the information, I'm finding very credible information. And one of the sources that I have found is the Carnegie Institute for Science. And we're going to be going over two very critical articles. And I think that these articles are going to open up everyone's eyes. There's absolutely no doubt. One thing that I did want to mention before we get into these two articles is after my last live broadcast earlier this morning, I hate to keep beating a dead horse in the mouth, but the trolling activity has started once again heavily. And these people that entertain themselves with these troll groups are out for blood. They are out to do everything possible to discredit myself, Chris Potter, and our physicist, who is going to be coming on board with us Tuesday, as I have announced. We are going to have a live stream broadcast. It will be about two hours long. It will begin promptly at 2 p.m. Eastern Time. And we are going to introduce everyone to our physicist. She is an absolutely fantastic person. Very well educated. More than 17 years of lecturing and teaching. So we feel that her credentials allow her to step up to the plate and present more than 90 research papers on what is exactly happening in our inner solar system. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we all know that there are major disinformation or misinformation campaigns that are conducted on a regular basis. Governments do it. Corporations do it. People do it. But the bottom line is the situation that we're in is critical. It's very critical. We don't have time to waste with nonsense. But these other factions will try to create this nonsense. You know, back a few weeks ago, I had the notorious Daza the cameraman and his, I don't know what you want to call him, his partner in crime, digging up information on my background. Wow, big deal. I've been arrested a few times, had a DUI. Ooh, big deal. I'm this arch criminal. Wow, big deal. So they splattered a mugshot of mine all over YouTube, and they're ordering court records from some court system down in South Florida. Big deal. It's not like I ever hurt anybody. It's not like I was some type of a bank robber, but they had their minion or their minions out there spreading this nonsense all over YouTube to discredit me. Well, ladies and gentlemen, here's the bottom line. I am not a pushover. I'm not a punk. I stand up for myself. I do stand up for others. So they can try the smear campaigns all they want. They can spread my mugshot all over the creation. I don't care. The bottom line is, I feel at this point in my life, I have a job to do. And this job is to gather the information, continue my investigations and my research, and bring credible factions to our listening 
ears. You know, I put in, oh, anywhere from 12 to 14 hours a day. I am up at 3 a.m., seven days a week, and I start my day. And the reason why I do this is because I do have a general love for humanity and this planet that we live on. I want answers. Everybody wants these answers. And one way or another, we're going to get them. So let's start taking a look at the information that I've discovered once again. And the first article that we're going to be looking at is quite interesting. This was titled back in September 6th of 2016. The title is Brown Dwarfs Hiding in Plain Sight in Our Solar Neighborhood. Very interesting. The article starts off by saying, cool brown dwarfs are a hot topic in astronomy right now. Smaller than stars and bigger than giant planets, they hold promise for helping us understand both stellar evolution and planet formation. New work from a team including Carnegie's Jonathan Gagne has discovered several ultra-cool brown dwarfs in our own solar neighborhood. Their findings are published in the Astrophysical Journal. Hmm. Very interesting. The article goes on to state that brown dwarfs are sometimes called failed stars. They are too small to sustain the hydrogen fusion process that powers stars. So after forming, they slowly cool, contract, and dim over time. Their temperatures can range from nearly as hot as a star to as cool as a planet, and their masses also range between star-like and giant planet-like. They're fascinating to astronomers, or amateur astronomers, for a variety of reasons, mostly because they can serve as a bridge between stars and planets and how the former influences the latter, particular when it comes to composition and atmospheric properties. But much about them remains unknown. Now, once again, ladies and gentlemen, I hate to keep beating a dead horse in the mouth, but I have to. There are a lot of people out there that want to spread disinformation. They want to try to debunk everything that you say related to planet X, what's going on in our inner solar system, and what's happening with our Earth. Well, I'll just use this phrase. Right now, it is the sign of the times. If you carefully take a look at what is happening around the world, if you just sit down at your computer or even using your cell phone for just 15 minutes, you will see cataclysmic events occurring all around the globe. What a wild winter time that we've had in the nor Northern Hemisphere. What a wild summertime that the people that live in the Southern Hemisphere, they've had. Down in Australia, extreme temperatures. In the Northern Hemisphere, in the United States, we had a little mixture of everything. On the East Coast, we had 60 degree temperatures, 65 the day after Christmas. It's like springtime all through the winter. I didn't mind it. The same thing over in Europe. But there were areas on this globe that had extreme cold. Some 
countries had a taste of snow and winter time and they've never seen in a lifetime. Ocean temperatures around the world steadily on the rise. Wild weather everywhere. Earthquakes, volcanoes, rogue waves. So what's next? We've already seen a considerable increase in meteor activity over the past 18 months. I believe this year the JPL searching for near-Earth objects. I mean, I can only imagine that office is going crazy because there are objects just coming out of nowhere and streaking across the sky. What's next? A major impact? <coughs> Excuse me. Eventually, the laws of probability are going to take its course with these meteors and these near-Earth objects, and we're going to have an impact. The video that I did today concerning the catastrophic earthquake in New Zealand, which was a 7.8 magnitude earthquake, and downplayed by the governments and the media because they really didn't want you to know what actually happened in that beautiful island country. And if you watched my video on it, I detailed the scientific information that came out, and wow, it was pretty shocking. And as I stated, in that video, could you only imagine if something like that occurred in a major city somewhere on this planet? Not out in the beautiful rolling hills of New Zealand, but in a major metropolitan city like Los Angeles or San Francisco where there are millions of people at risk. And all of these agencies, the alphabet soup agencies, they're scrambling and they have the data. They know exactly what's happening. But they're not giving us the whole story. <clears throat> So the bottom line is we will continue to try and dig and dig for this information. Now, we're going to go ahead and jump back to this article because there's a little bit of a video here. And the video is quite intriguing. I think you'll find it very interesting. <coughs> Excuse me, ladies and gentlemen. <clears throat> I have that dry throat. Now, this video is going to just go over a little bit of the mechanics of the brown dwarf formation. And there is going to be a piece of this video clip that might look quite familiar to some of you and some of the opposition. Now, I didn't put this video together. I didn't put this video in this article. And before we even get to it, let's pan down here and we're going to show you. This was provided by the Carnegie Institute for Science. Prestigious school. Fantastic. Very credible. Now, what you're about to see, I'm going to go ahead and bring this to full screen. What you're about to see is what they've put together. So let's take a look at it. I'm just going to go ahead and mute the music. It's showing you the relative size of the sun, a star, the brown dwarfs, and stars are formed from clouds of gas that collapse. If the cloud is massive enough, it collapses under gravitational force until the core density and temperature are high enough to trigger hydrogen fusion. Brown dwarfs form from gas, uh, gas clouds, and so on and so forth. 
But when I was reading this article and what I stumbled onto and the information that they used, I'm going to just stop it right there. If you take a look at this photograph, this picture, this artist's rendition, we've spotted this object around the sun. We have photographs of this object from Australia, Germany, and Switzerland. I've previewed the photographs depicting what you're seeing on your screen. And I've been going over a lot of information with our physicist. I've actually overwhelmed her with information. But she's hanging in there. And she's dedicating herself to finding out exactly what's going on. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to be very honest with you. And I want you to understand one thing. No matter how smart you think you are, no matter how good your education is or was, we're all human beings and we could all make mistakes. And if you're a professional and you make a mistake and you step up to the plate and you admit it, well, that's great. But when you're making mistakes or purposely deceiving people, like some of these debunkers do, because that's what they're paid to do. You have to understand that. We all make mistakes. But I want you to understand one thing. We are in a race for time. We're in a race for information and the knowledge because I want to be prepared. I don't know about all of you, but I don't want to wake up in the middle of the night and be under siege by something within our solar system. We all can clearly see that there are serious issues with our sun. And I've been going over this information with our physicist, and she absolutely agrees with me 100%. The things that are happening with our sun are not normal. Now, earlier this morning, real early this morning, because we have a six-hour time difference, we had a discussion about what is happening. And in each and every week, once again, we're under the gun with these coronal holes and the solar wind blasting our planet. I've checked the earthquake activity just before this live broadcast, and there is absolutely an uptick in the earthquake activity. I mentioned this earlier that the earthquake data that's being released, we have a very good feeling that they are downplaying and manipulating this data dealing with the magnitude of these earthquakes, keeping them below a magnitude five. Why? Well, ladies and gentlemen, if all of a sudden the earth is riddled with magnitude six, 6.5, 6.8 earthquakes, well, that's going to draw the attention of people around the world and media sources, which we can't even believe the media anymore. So we try our best to gather this data. But I want to go ahead and continue playing this short video clip because we're going to find something that they used in this video that's very interesting. So let's continue. It says, although they can be as hot as stars when formed without fusion to sustain them, they cool over hundreds of millions of years. 
Old Brown Dwarfs can be as cool as room temperature and support atmospheres with methane and water vapor. Brown dwarfs radiate mostly in infrared light. Now, I'm going to stop it right there. This is the four-star infrared camera. It says, thus, astrophysicists mainly study them with infrared cameras. What we found out, and you're going to see in another article that was published, they say that these brown dwarfs, you cannot see them. They're kind of invisible because they do not emit their own light, like a regular star, like our sun. And this has been kind of the philosophy of these scientists for quite a while. But however, more information is coming out that... These brown dwarf stars are very powerful magnetically. They just, they're just like big magnets in space. They attract everything. They manipulate everything. And if they get next to a host star like our sun, well, all hell breaks loose. Now, this isn't something that happens very rapidly. It happens over time. And when the brown dwarf has moved closer, a magnetic portal connection between the sun and the brown dwarf will occur. We think that it had occurred last year sometime, possibly even sooner. Because of all of these coronal holes, they are like open lesions and scars on the sun. When these coronal holes open up, we are showered with this solar wind of particles from the sun, which therefore heat the internal core of the earth, causing earthquakes and volcanic activity. I mean, we could even have a crustal displacement. That would be something that would be catastrophic for our planet. So... We don't have the right to know that something like this might occur. Huh. Well, that's just nice. But we're finding out through our research and our investigations that these pretty brown dwarf stars can also start to emit their own light. When they get close to a sun such as ours, it's almost like they took a Viagra and they're rejuvenated. It takes some time, but it can't happen. Scientific evidence has proved it. But yet you'll have these so-called amateurs that come out and state that there is no brown dwarf in our solar system. There is no brown dwarf close to our solar system. However, all of these credible scientists and physicists and astrophysicists from around the world are disagreeing with you. They are publishing papers and articles such as what you are looking at now. So my question to all of you is going to be very basic. Are you going to believe an amateur astronomer on YouTube who debunks Planet X videos, or are you going to believe people that trained for half of their life, studied and educated themselves, and, and these people conduct legitimate research at universities. Are you going to believe them? Or are you going to believe the little Astro Boy that has a debunking channel on YouTube? And possibly even a telescope, I don't even know. 
But these scientists, it seems over the course of the last 10 years, they've had this kind of suspicious, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Like all of a sudden, they just had this interest in these brown dwarf stars over the past 10 years. And they have been scattering for this information and this research. Every single one of these universities, in order to conduct this research, they have to be funded. They have to be funded money. As long as the money comes in, they will continue with the research. Several of the lectures that I've listened to last week, more than nine hours of them, at credible universities such as Harvard and Cornell and Carnegie, they admit at the very end, if the funding stops, so does the research. And they they're they're basically their their data that that they're being given from NASA and the the space satellites and the probes all of the devices and mechanisms that are out there in space they've admitted that they're not being given all of the information nor are they be, being given complete access to everything but yet they will continue their research because they're being funded and this is what they do so whenever our physicist comes on board and all of you get to meet her you're going to be talking to and listening to an individual that's dedicated almost 20 years of her life into physics and science so I don't know how much more credibility that anyone would need. But I don't see too many other professional astronomers stepping up to the plate and talking about this planet X factor. Why? Because they probably know better. It just so happens that our physicist had a good friend of hers that she attended college with. She still kept in touch with. He's a professional astronomer. This is what he does for a living. Very bright man. So she stated that she was going to contact him and ask him for some help. She did just that. The conversation didn't go too well. It seemed that he had some inner fear of the subject matter. He stated that he could not put anything down on paper. He could not attach his name to anything. However, they could sit down over a cup of coffee and discuss it off the record. So that just goes to show you, ladies and gentlemen, that there is a worldwide cover-up to hide this information from the world. What are we actually in for? I've been studying this subject matter now in depth. This is my 14th year. So, you know, when you have these crackpots out there that, that tell you and that make these rude comments that Scott does not know what he's talking about. Well, Scott does know what he's talking about. I don't have access to all of the technology that these astronomers and astrophysicists and physicists have. I'm not part of these huge collegiate research programs that are funded by whoever, the government you know, private research, whatever. But I do the best that I can 
and I think that I do come up with a lot of credible information. And there are the people out there that will sit there and tell you that they know for a fact that there is nothing in our solar system disturbing the sun because they've seen the evidence. But when you ask them to show you the evidence, then the smear campaign comes out. They tried to do it to Steve Olson. They've tried to do it to BP Earthwatch. Uh, you know, even Dutch Sense is having problems with his earthquake forecasting. And, and that guy does a fantastic job. So why would someone try to discredit him when he's simply forecasting earthquakes to possibly warn people and save a life? That's pretty despicable, if you ask me. It's really not the way that God, Jesus Christ, taught us to be. They never stated in preachings and writings to be despicable to your fellow man and woman. But that's what's happening. Let's move on a little bit in this video. This is just showing some of the technology, the infrared technology used to examine and see these cameras, or excuse me, see these brown doors with these cameras. Now, right here, it's telling you that these cameras need to be cooled down to minus 196 96 degrees Celsius, minus 321 degrees Fahrenheit with liquid nitrogen so that they are not blinded by their own thermal radiation. Pretty sophisticated stuff. Let's move on. The next frame says... If seen with human eyes, the color of brown dwarfs would be close to magenta, despite the name brown dwarf. Kind of a cool looking object. Now, the next frame says, but if seen through infrared eyes, they can take a large variety of colors that depend on their ages, masses, and composition. So there is a lot of information for the scientists to actually study if given the right equipment. Goes on to further say that brown dwarves isolated in space are hard to spot because they are faint, but they are easier to study than exoplanets. Remember the guys that came out, the scientists, seven Earth-like planets. Oh, what did we just see here? Wow. Let's back that up a little bit. Whoa, what was that? That looks like the SDO footage from 2007 showing what we are considering to be the brown dwarf traversing across the sun. Now, ladies and gentlemen, whenever I came out with that video footage and that information, I was crucified, crucified for divulging that information. And then I was told it was the moon, our moon that we see in the sky above the earth. But now you're seeing this in a video produced in this article by Carnegie. Wow. So who's telling the truth? A major university and science technology school? or some amateur astronomer on YouTube 
who possibly may be working for some government faction and doesn't want you to know that in that footage from the SDO back in 2007 showing a planetary ob object that was very large traversing across the face of the sun in front of the SDO camera. Not just one camera, multiple cameras. I just find it very suspicious. Now, after reading this article from 2016, and them showing almost identical footage, even though this is animated, it is identical to the work that has been conducted by our physicist who has produced multiple papers on this so-called SDO eclipse. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> this SDO eclipse... This has been a serious subject, ladies and gentlemen, because they continually want us to believe that that is the moon floating in front of that camera, not some object in space in our inner solar system that shouldn't be there. They produce little computer-aided uh, models that they produce. Then they show them to you. I'm talking about these YouTube debunkers. So, they want you to believe a computer-aided model, a computer-animated model that they produced, and just because they produced it, putting in their own data to show you what they want you to see. So, so what, we're supposed to believe that? Get out of here. What are you, crazy? We're not stupid. When I read this article earlier today, and this video was included in the article. I was drinking a cup of coffee, and when this black object traversed across the face of this sun, right in front of me, I spit my coffee all over the place. I was like, wow, look at that. Identical to the footage from February 2007. And it looks exactly like the SDO so-called eclipse that happens twice a year. And Mr. So-and-so, Mr. Amateur, says that he positively calculated the eclipse and uh, blah, 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 whatever else he says. He actually was on this a month before this so-called SDO eclipse even happened. Why? Because he stated that he was preparing himself for all of the Planet X channels to come out and use the footage from the SDO showing this object traversing across the face of the sun. His handlers told him to get prepared. Well, you know what? We all backed off. We all backed off from that piece of footage because we knew for a fact that it would bring the so-called heat from these trolling operations. I already know what the object is. When it traverses across the sun and the SDO camera catches it twice a year, I already know what it is. 
I don't need a scientist or an astrophysicist or an astronomer to tell me what it is because I know what it is. And it sure as hell isn't the moon. So I can't wait to hear some of the comments from some of these individuals. I guess they're, you know, the next thing they're going to say is, oh, that's just fake. That's just fake. Scott's crazy. He just wants your money. You don't see me over here asking for donations, do you? I'm going to start selling t-shirts. Planet X, The Awakening. 25 bucks. I'll donate all the money. I'm not here to sell anything, ladies and gentlemen. They try to come at you with this, oh, his channel's monetized. He shows ads on his channel. Whoop-de-freaking-do. So do the other debunking channels. You don't pay for it. The advertisers pay for it. It's part of YouTube. It's a corporation. It's a moneymaker. So, ladies and gentlemen, what you're seeing on your screen, and let's roll that back. Because I just want to rub that in just a little bit more. Boy, look at that. Whoo. Ooh. What is that? Uh-huh. Well, that looks like a brown dwarf that just passed in front of the sun. Almost identical to the SDO footage. What do you have to say about that? I'm sure they'll have something to say. But anyways, let's keep on moving with our information. Now, it says, as they have similarities to stars and planets, meaning the brown dwarves, you can see they're doing a comparison here of the size. And it says, studying brown dwarfs can shed light on the evolution and atmospheric properties of both. And they keep referring to brown dwarfs as hot Jupiters. Out of the nine hours of lectures that I sat through, that terminology came up through all of it, hot Jupiters. And if you take a look at Jupiter and take a look at the brown dwarf, they actually look similar. And what I found out through sitting through these boring lectures is that these brown dwarfs actually have weather. They have weather. They have cloud cover. They have storms. But the storms are just really bad. It rains iron. Raindrops made of molten iron. Just a horrible place to be. Let's keep on going through this. Very interesting. Now, the next frame says, understanding the process that take place in the atmospheres of exoplanets will be important. Well, there's all this big, big study on these exoplanets. I mean, what are we going to do? Are we going to go live on an exoplanet? I don't think so. And it says to determine which exoplanets are more favorable to harboring life. Well, listen, ladies and gentlemen, I don't know about you, but I want to stay my butt right on good old Mother Earth. I don't want to be some experiment on an exoplanet. But I think they're leading us into some type of disclosure. Some type of disclosure. So once you see very, 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 very broad, right in your face, Carnegie Science. Okay, so we know that this is a piece of credible information. Very credible. 
Now I'm going to pan back up here. We're going to exit out of there and we're going to take a look at another article very quickly. 23 million year old brown dwarf flashes brighter than the sun's most powerful flares. Let me repeat that. Flashes brighter than the sun's most powerful flares. What is that telling us? That's telling us that they have seen scientifically that a brown dwarf has the ability to shine. It has the ability to shine. This article was released on June 13th, 2016. Boom. These debunkers laughed at us, producing photographs and video from around the world showing very odd and crazy looking anomalies in the sky. You know, what looked to be like round planets, but they're not our planets. Well, I guess in a sense, you know, we're all amateurs because we really don't know for a fact what is out there. But yet, when these individuals state that they know for a fact that there's nothing in our solar system, well, they're lying. They're lying through their filthy, dirty teeth. This looks like this would be Astro Boy's big brother. <laughs> Sorry about that. But anyways, this guy's a professor at the University of Delaware, and he's uncovered and discovered an ultra-cool brown dwarf star that can generate flares stronger than the sun's. He discovered it. He proved it. Now, it states that although astronomers often refer to brown dwarves as failed stars, scientists at the University of Delaware have discovered that at least one of these dim celestial objects can emit powerful flashes of light. Once again, boom, that's in your face. So the other faction is telling us that if there was a brown dwarf in our solar system, you wouldn't see it because they don't emit light. Well, this very smart looking gentleman on your screen, who is a professor at a university, begs to differ with you. And his findings have been published not more than a year ago. And I have so much more of this information from all of these universities and all of these brainiacs that are now investigating and have been investigating this for quite some time. The rest of the article goes into talking about their techniques and how they did their research and how they came to their conclusions. One key part of this says, our work shows, however, that colder brown dwarfs cannot generate flares, even though they also have magnetic fields. Now, ladies and gentlemen, these very intense magnetic fields that these objects have, they are very, very strong. Very strong. What's happening to our sun right now is very, very critical. It, it does worry me. You know, and if you just look up at the sun, if you're able to see it, between all of the uh, chemtrailing duties. It just doesn't even look right. When you have a clear day and the sun is shining, no clouds, no chemtrailing, I want you to pay very close attention to the color of the light. 
I've been looking at this for a long time. It almost seems like it's a studio light or, or fluorescent light. It just doesn't look like that beautiful orange ball of light that was in the sky when I was growing up as a kid. And that's been some time ago. We have several YouTube channels like Mike from Around the World and BP Earthwatch that are analyzing the UV rays, ultraviolet rays, and radiation around the world. And they're probably being attacked for divulging this information. But why are people attacking individuals for investigating and researching these subjects? That is the question that I want all of you that are listening to me right now. That is the question that you need to ask yourself. Why would a faction or a group attack individuals who are simply out there trying to find out what's happening and divulging the information to their fellow man and woman who will in turn protect their own family? What is wrong with that? What is wrong with that? I'll be quite honest with you, ladies and gentlemen. We are living in a very, very sad world nowadays. With all of the hate and the anger and the fear of war. You know, I mentioned this the other day. With all of the food that we throw away every single day. As powerful as this planet is and the people on it, we should not have one person on the face of this earth starving, wondering where their next meal is going to come from. We should not have one single person on the face of this planet that is homeless and that does not have shelter. Whatever happened to helping your, your fellow man? I know there's a lot of us out there that have beautiful hearts. And we can't save the world. But just every now and then, you know, thinking about that, wasting food, thinking about, you know, the shelter that you have the roof over your head every single night as you lay your head down on your soft pillow. Why is there so much hate for individuals that are simply investigating something, putting their mind to science? When did science become so bad? They claim because we're misrepresenting it. But who are they to say that we are representing it? Who are they? I mean, what are they? The ambassadors of Planet X YouTube debunkers? One of these individuals actually made that statement. Said that he wanted to be the ambassador to the Planet X community on YouTube. <laughs> oh God, what a joke. Do we have time for a puppet ambassador? Hell no. Every waking moment that we have living and breathing on this planet is in jeopardy. Do you want to be surprised when it drops in your lap? I don't think so. As I've mentioned before, I don't have a lot of time in the course of my day to sit in the comment section and try to defend myself with all of the slanderous remarks and blah, blah, blah. 
one thing that I did want to do is I wanted to thank every single one of you that take the time to defend me. I really appreciate it. I enjoy reading your comments. And I just wanted to give a, a little shout out to, to three individuals. And, you know, they've really come on board. And over the last 24 hours, man, these guys have really been defending me. And they're taking it to the street. And I love it. Factinator, 33. Bill Daly and Gavin. Hey, man, I love you guys. You are absolutely fantastic brothers for life. I hope you're watching this video. And take what I'm saying as sincerity. I thank you. I thank every single one of you that stick it out in the comment section with these hideous individuals and you stick up for me because I can't be there all the time. And it's when I'm not there that they spew their hatred. And please keep it in the back of your mind. If there ever comes a point in time and I have to defend any one of you, you can guarantee that I'll be there and I'll defend you to the end. I speak all the time of being united as a people. That is the only way that we will be able to maintain control. Right now, the elite have the control over everything going on around the world. But this planet doesn't belong to them. This planet was given to us by God, and this is where man lives. And we cannot allow our planet to be destroyed by hateful, sickening, disgusting, luciferian, worshiping people. Because that is exactly what these ignorant scum are. I truly believe that. You see it coming out in the news every single day. Alternative media is being shut down because they're exposing this Luciferian agenda. The things that they're doing to children and, oh, I don't even want to get into it. It just makes me sick to my stomach. So, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for all of us to stand up. We must awake. I want all of you to stay tuned. Each and every day, we're going to be coming out with more and more and more credible scientific information. Listen, it may be boring to you at times, but in the long run, you're going to understand what's occurring. And as I've always said before, knowledge is power. The more knowledge you have, the more powerful you will be. And they don't want you to have that knowledge. They want to keep you dumbed down to the ground. And the human species is a fighter. We've been here for a long time. We've fought through everything. And right now, it just seems that we are in another fight, another battle to win the war. I want all of you to keep in mind, once again, I will repeat myself. Please take into consideration why there is so much hatred towards individuals who are researching the planet X factor and these brown dwarfs in and around our solar system and what's happening to our sun. Why would these factions come after us with pure hatred? Like the hatred that Lucifer has 
in his black heart. Unbelievable. So, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to just leave you with that thought. Once again, I want to thank everybody who sticks up for me. I know all of you have my back when I'm not around. I really, really appreciate that. Once again, big shout out to Factinator33, Bill Daly, and Gavin. You three guys, man, I love you. Keep up the good work. And you have my blessing to continue smashing down the hatred that these individuals spew. This is Scott from Planet X News and the Nibiru Channel. I'd like to thank all of you for watching. Stay tuned. And don't forget, keep an eye in the sky.